that's beautiful. Well, hello there. My name is HW. Hey, I'm Masus. And uh, thank you so much for watching uh, Tone Jigga TV. Suze, today we are talking about uh, a more focused EQ, maybe even a mix ready EQ. Mm. But I'm going to call this the most important Kemper EQ ever in the history of Kemper EQs. Wow. Bold. Very bold. Very <laughs> bold. So in the last video we were talking about um, how I was putting like an EQ on some stuff and, and talking about like boosting and not boosting and stuff. And um, so in general I want to talk about that. So here is uh, the, a the 66 AC 50 B3. I'm going to take away some of this uh, big stuff and let's just listen to it. Um, with uh, with no EQ and with just some reverb and stuff. Um, let's see, what's this reverb at? I just kind of want to strip. Yeah, there's not a ton of verb at all on here. Um, here we go. No delay, so they can hear this. Cool, man. So here is the most important EQ ever created in the history of EQs for the Kemper. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. So all I'm doing here is I kind of, we talked about this in the last video a little bit, but all I'm doing here is in general for me, there are things I do to get more mid range or less mid range, um, depending on what I really am, like where I'm putting the EQ, like how I go about getting more and less mid range will give me more or less mid range in sort of a different way. Mm -hmm. So I like to think of it like, you know what, forget it. We'll call this video, how to get more mid-range. How to get better <laughs> mid-range. That's it, that's the new clickbaity title for this video. How to get better mid-range. And so to me, the real secret is um, if you're doing it in front of the amplifier, I like mm -hmm. to cram in mids. Hmm. Like I like to boost the mids mm -hmm. before it goes into there. And then you get that tube screamer effect, or you get the clon effect. So that might be a tube screamer here, or yeah. an EQ here. Or an EQ right here. I yeah. got an EQ right there. We'll try okay. that in a moment. But post amplifier, or post mics and speakers and stuff, EQ, mm. a way to um, get more of what you want is to take away some of the stuff you don't need. So you're left with a much, sort of the essence of the sound. Mm -hmm. So I like to take away highs and lows to get a more focused mid rangey sound. Mm -hmm. So the main thing I'm doing here is at 128, I'm cutting uh, the gain by 1.6. And at 58, or sorry, 4,800, this is 48,513, right? But whatever, I'm, I'm bringing down the gain of one and a half. Now these two, it's important to know what these two are doing. They're not peaks. So you might be thinking he's dipping the gain at that frequency or he's boost or he's dipping the gain at this frequency. It's actually not what I'm doing. In the studio equalizer with the Kemper, these are shelves. So you're picking the point and from that point up or that point down, all the frequencies are being reduced or boosted by that much. Mm. So everything below 128 it, it, with this EQ on gets pushed down. So 100 gets pushed down, 50 gets pushed down, mm -hmm. 119, 118, 117, you know what I'm saying? All those frequencies are pushed down. Mm -hmm. When I'm up here at 58, all those frequencies get pushed down, but everything higher, 8,000, 10,000, 5,000, everything higher than 4,800 mm -hmm. gets pushed down. Okay. So that's how, that's, now, and also what's important about that is it's not a high and a low cut. I'm actually leaving frequencies in there. Mm -hmm. I could totally cut them out if I want. I could use the high and low cut to do that. There's cuts over here. I have them off. Okay. You can do that over here. You can say I want zero frequencies, mm -hmm. you know, up there. And I've covered that in other videos and stuff. But so what I do is I cut a little bit, cut a little bit, and then I ha and then we have some peaks in here for some mid-range um, sort of uh, accents that we mm -hmm. want to have. So let's just show off. Um, what happens if I cut this even more? So let's go down here to three and a half. I'm really going to cut this down. So I'm picking two points where I say everything above here 
it's not really quite essential. It's not that it's, I want it gone, mm -hmm. but I want to I wanna put the guitar and accent what I've got in between those two things because that's where I think the guitar is going to live in this mix. Gotcha. So I've cut these now 3.4 and 3.5, pretty aggressive. So now let's listen to that same sound again. <laughs> Now let's turn it off so we can hear it without it. Alright, one more time with it on. Yeah, that's a big difference. It's a big difference. Yeah. It's nice though. It doesn't quite feel like you're standing in front of a 412, which this is, mm -hmm. right? Because it took away all that low end in the yeah. bass. But by doing that, the guitar to me feels clearer, more focused. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like a guitar that you could turn up louder yeah. without it getting all the yeah, stuff. You without know? it getting yeah. muddy and bassy mm -hmm. and everything. Let's go even further. Let's like let's really, really let's. Uh... So you're leaving the mid. Um, so I have boost some, that where they I, are. I have some accents, and we'll go play with those in a minute. Okay, but, but these um, are coming further. Yeah, and further. the boosts I have too are all are like less than a decibel. So they're they're very small. They're not huge, but this should be making a huge difference. So now play with these extra. What have I done here? I've I'm now cutting six and seven decibels out. So this is on. This right is now? on right now. And now going back to the original. It's a completely different amp. Yeah. Completely totally. different. I wouldn't even yeah. guess that's the same amplifier. Oh yeah, like different profiles. Completely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what I hear there is, when, I, when your ear jumps back and forth, it's not that either one is bad. Because mm -hmm. I think we played this at the beginning, but as soon as my ear jumps back, to, when I turn it off and all that high end and low end comes in, I feel like, oh. Mm -hmm. But it, it adjusts and then you get used to that sound. Like, play that sound again. I'm gonna jump on the middle too. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Hear the difference there. Now I'm going to turn that EQ on. That's a guitar, that's the EQ of a guitar you hear in a mix. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, it doesn't sound like a guitar naturally in the room. Yeah. Um, uh, and that's because we're kind of used to hearing those two mm -hmm. sounds very differently. Sounds good. You can really mix one in and it's going to blend really nicely. Mm -hmm. The other one is going to make guitar players unhappy if that's what you have to listen to all the time. Yeah, and that's not something we talk about a lot, but like almost no um, mic'd up guitar amplifier is left alone in a, no. produ a production, a no. recording, a live environment. So it's like you have to ask yourself like, yeah. what are they fixing? Yeah. What are they removing or yeah. adding? You know? Yeah. I, uh, yeah, example. Wait, wait, this just in, absolutely zero guitars on the record or not, don't have a post there Oh them. man. They, they have. To a huge degree too. To a huge degree. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do something sensible and I'm going to leave these cut at two and a half. When you download this, it'll come at one and a half, but I'm going to leave it at two and a half for the purpose of this video because this is a, this EQ is a starting point, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, now let's, let's talk about the, the, the mid range peaks. Now we got a couple things we can do with mid range. So, First point of the video here, you can achieve better mid-range or more mid-range by cutting the highs and lows post-amp, right? You can um, you can boost mids into the amp, and, and that's a mid-boost. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that so much because that's not really the point. We, we all know what a tube stringer sounds like. We all know mm -hmm. uh, this is the, like a fat, the fatness EQ. You can download that. So if we want to get um, more uh, mids or better mids, we also can accent some of the mid-range frequencies. And mid-range is a big thing, right? So what we have is, when we come in here, we've got mid one, and we page over, we've got mid two, right? And so what happens here is we have two options to sort of, I'm gonna say, boost some mids. So I'm gonna pick a lower mid frequency, 560, and, and um, an upper mid frequency, um, 1600. 
Now I'm gonna leave this, um, I'm gonna put these both at, um, I'm gonna put these both at zero. Well, I'm gonna just put the upper one at zero so we can just focus on 550 for a minute. So here I'm gonna boost, I'm gonna boost two and a half decibels at 550 and let's listen to what that sounds like. <laughs> I'm gonna cut it down two and a half. Let's go down 3.2 decibels. We turned it into a fender. Right. We turned the AC30 into a into a fender. We right. scooped it, right? So now I'm gonna come back to zero. Try that. Here's two and a half again. Boosting up. Boosting up, two and a half, yep. Here is five, yeah, five, close enough, five. Let's go to 10. Let's just this go is crazy. 10 dB, 10 of dB. That frequency. Yeah, man. I mean, hmm. we're cutting two and a half of the highs and lows. We're boosting 10 there. That starts to get tube screamery. And this is all after the amp. All after the amp. Yeah. Oh. You could cram that much, in my opinion, you could cram that much mid range boost in the front and it'll sound pretty good because the amp is like accepting. yeah it'll accept it it'll put <laughs> like, it through its filter and it's yeah. really not gonna you know it's still gonna do its thing now mm -hmm. that's really cool so we've heard what that does now let's leave this over here at um let's leave it where we like it right i like like three it's aggressive but it mm -hmm. gives a nice full mid-range try that right it's just close to two and a half <laughs> sound to you great too much too little no that's you about like it? it's a nice sound. happy medium yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so now let's go to a, a higher mid-range frequency right and i'm gonna by the way there's a q on here the q is how big that peak is mm. don't worry about it like honestly you could change the q if you want mm -hmm. if you just pick two frequencies like this the default q is always 0.7 on like all daws all mixers that's like the default where we're going to start mm -hmm. it, you're, if you don't have a q labeled on like a unit it's going to be this 0.7 it, you just find your two frequencies the more you widen it the larger it gets the wider that boost becomes and you're mm -hmm. boosting tons of other frequencies with it right 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 so whatever you can experiment with that mm -hmm. Here is a 1600, and I'm gonna boost it up three and a half decibels. So just so I'm tracking, so the first one was at 500. Now these are 550. Changes. Yeah. Okay, these 550. are changes at 1600. Yeah, now okay. we're at 1600. Okay. Now let's cut this down three. Minus three decibels at about 1600 hertz. Okay. Hmm. Describe what you feel like that did. What does it feel like happened to that sound? Like, how would you describe those two sounds? It still feels a little scoopy to me. Yeah. But like, it almost like wear on the guitar, you know, like I know that it's kind of going up, but it's like more on the higher strings that it feels scoopy than on the, like the, the middle lower strings. strings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. To me, it almost sounds like the guitar just got less present. Like it's less okay. in your face. Like if I come up here, like, like here's plus three, play that. <laughs> yeah. It's, that. it's right in that, it's right there. Yeah. You know, huh. I always think of mid range. If people ask me, what is mid range? I go, it's the sound of a megaphone. The sound of a megaphone is a complete dump of the low and high. There you go. And it's this small speaker that gets your voice and it sounds like 
Attention, everyone. Right. This is how. This is how you get better mid range. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? That's the sound. Hello, attention. It's this. Yeah. Hot, it's you know. It's the, and and it's it's all of these frequencies. Mm -hmm. You know, it's probably not at the 550, but it's the this honky higher stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. When and, I and both are important. Yeah, yeah. In terms of the upper mids is a lot of the mid range you get in Marshalls, mm -hmm. and it's why if you've ever dimed a plexi, you will notice that um, you can actually dime the mid range, and you still have enough brightness where you can take down the presence and the treble, and you're not left with a dark sound at all. Right. It's because there's there's enough there's enough high mids. And it's pushing enough in there that you're sort of getting some treble. You're getting treble frequencies there. Mm -hmm. And then if you dump all them, anyway, that's it. That's for another video. Let's try. Um, you know what this is? It's a it's a mids masterclass. It's a mid. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, subtitle. Exactly. Yeah. It, it is. A, it, it's a Kemper mids masterclass. Mm -hmm. Now let's up this to 2,500 hertz. And let's boost it by three decibels, and let's listen to what that does to the mid range there. And that's leaving now the sixteen hundred alone. Sixteen hundred is going to be done. Okay. Yeah. Now let's dump this. Let's only take out like two decibels. We're taking out two decibels at twenty five hundred hertz. Yeah. Hmm. Different for sure. Yeah. Try this uh, like one and one and a half. Or two and a half, sorry. I'm, sh I'm, I'm taking a boost and I'm sweeping. So let's take this. Uh, let's take this four decibel boost. We're going to do four decibels of mid range, right? And I'm even going to take. I'm gonna, now going to bring this 500 decibel. Uh, th sorry, 500 decibels. Dang. Very loud. <laughs> um, let's take this 500 hertz boost and let's back it off, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just leave it at one because it kind of sounds good when it's on a little bit. Anyway, and now let's take our second one, and I'm going to boost four decibels, and I'm going to sweep from 500 mm -hmm. while you're playing. I'm going to sweep all the way up to 3,000. So I'm just taking this peak and moving it up and down. Check this out. Watch this. Here is a four decibel boost at 500. Play like three chords and then we'll jump to the next one. Here's a four decibel boost at 1,000-ish. 1,000. Here's a four decibel mid-range boost at 1,500. Here's a four decibel boost at 2,000 hertz. Here's a four decibel boost at 2,500 hertz. That's, that's all the voices of the guitar. And like that's to me. all mid-range still. We're not into highs or whatever. I mean, there's no official line of demarcation. To me, this is affecting how bright I hear the sound. Mm. But, um, but I mean, no, I wouldn't consider 2,500 treble. Like okay. we're getting up there. It's five or six thousand. Yeah, for sure, yeah, for okay. sure. And then you know, you get into the airy breathiness of the guitar with presence and stuff, and you can be up in the. 8,000, 10,000, okay. 7,000, 6,000, 5,000, 5,500, you know, to me, somewhere around 4,000, we're moving from mid-range to treble on the guitar. Okay. You know, now this is... Yeah, and you've targeted 550 and 
twelve hundred or whatever. Sixteen. Sixteen hundred. Two thousand. Okay. We start to get into the upper range. Like twenty five hundred is definitely upper, up, upper. Like we're getting in there. I'd start to he the guitar starts to sound brighter. Yeah. You know, it starts to be like, is that a Fender guitar over a Gibson? Mm -hmm. Is that a brighter amp? For sure. So it is affecting brightness. To me, mm -hmm. the Marshalls and their upper mids have a lot of that twenty five hundred on the mid range pop. You get a lot of that brightness, you know, and then the treble's like even higher and the presence is the click clack, you know, but that's yeah. a plexi. It's big, it's bright, it's, it's huge, you know. Mm -hmm. um, for me, where I cut is 45 or 5,000 mm -hmm. and I go everything above here is high end. Whether okay. you want to call this treble or presence, this is definitely high yeah. end. Okay. Below this, I don't, you know, that's my, I'm, I don't consider mid-range anywhere above there. Mm -hmm. You know, so then, even 3,000 I already touched it, but for me, between 500 and 2500 is where I'm trying to accent mid-range on the guitar. Because mm -hmm. I think that's where you get clons, tube screamers, and kind of mid-boosts and stuff. Right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it makes huge difference, you know. Huge. Like, he's even maybe even more than changing a profile here or there, you know, or like, yeah. you know. So for me, what I like to do is... I like, maybe say you want to take a happy medium, take this 1800 area. We're kind of between 15 and 2000. Mm -hmm. the, you know, we'll call that more the Marshall E upper. Marshall, I think it goes even further. And here's, and we'll do a two decibel boost. And then we'll do a, a, a we'll do a two decibel boost at 5500. And with our low cuts, let's try that and see how that sounds. So we're not doing too much to anybody here. You know, we're, we're cutting and boosting one and a half cuts on the lows mm -hmm. and we're and we're taking two mid-range areas and boosting two decibels and now let's play that gotcha. now i'm going to turn that off completely and we're going to go back to just how, how it sounds by itself better with the EQ on that's crazy I know huh yeah it's funny you say better it's mm -hmm. like we identified the AC fifth like this is one of my favorite profiles mm -hmm. you know we did a video last video sounds great with no EQ mm -hmm. we talked about how much we liked totally. it and everything yeah. but you start to focus the guitar you get used to it and I agree with you mm -hmm. for playing in a mix yeah I'm gonna go to this right here every yeah. time every time this is and to me the real value of the Kemper is I don't have to make, without it, this is the sound of a 57 and a fathead mm -hmm. on a 1969 412 <laughs> in a booth with an AC 66 or 66 AC 50 recently serviced before I did that. Like, mm -hmm. this is. That's how it sounded. This is it. Yeah. You know? I tried to angle the 57 off and I did the thing. Mm -hmm. And this is truer to the sound you hear from the amp. Mm -hmm. Throws off a lot of bass. Right. 412s have a lot of bass. Throws off a lot of highs. Yeah. And it sounds like this. Play that one time. <laughs> sounds good. Mm -hmm. No complaints. Yeah. Focus. <laughs> Every time, every single time, mm -hmm. I want to send that to the sound guy. Totally. Just I was made just it. thinking, yeah, because if you play with it off, you hope he's making or she's making those changes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so if mm -hmm. you can just give him a signal that you're yeah. happy with already, yeah. and he's probably, yeah. she's probably happy with yeah. those, you know. And then they can do the fine tweaking. Totally. But we've really, we've tried to dial it in our best, mm -hmm. and we're sending something that doesn't have stuff we don't need. Yeah. It's the bonsai tree, man. We clipped everything off. Mm -hmm. We're just left with that beautiful little tree. Yeah. And we're helping it grow into what it needs to be. Mm. And then, then you can have the sound person come in and go, well, how does it mix with this other thing? How they might still tweak things yeah. or whatever. That's but really their job, by the way. Yeah. Uh -huh. When you ask them to make everything sound great, that's a heck of a lot harder than make everything sound good together. Mm -hmm. That, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You If you make them start with, you know, 
if you're you just you're making their job needlessly difficult. Mm -hmm. And to me, and what happens if you are on the vocals or if you are clashing with another instrument? Turn you down. Down. You're getting dumped. <laughs> right. Yeah. Might as well go home. No one can hear you. Uh huh. So the thing is, we want to find our space and we want to figure out how to find our space. Yeah. And this is where you can come in here and practice and be playing along with you got in-ears or whatever. Mm -hmm. and you can come down here and go, let me boost myself at 1800 and see if that helps. And all of a sudden you go, oh, I cut. Now mm -hmm. I cut through. Yeah. Now I can really hear myself. Or walk in here and cut the bass out and then go, wow, the mix sounds more clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a and, more usable sound that you're sending. And then you, you can know. save that. Yeah. Uh -huh. And one of the beauties of digital is you just can't do that with analog. Right, yeah. You know, there's no way with my 64 vibrofer, my 68 Plex, I can, I, I'm, I'm a purist, I get it. I want to run out there with a Les Paul and a Plexi stack and just, mm -hmm. you know, change the world. I totally <laughs> understand it. And I get it, you're moving air and you're doing all this stuff. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Can you give me less low end? Right, right. You know how difficult that is to do on a plexi? Uh-huh. Because you start dumping the low end, it doesn't really do it. It's like, you don't have refined control. Yeah. You know? You'd have to get some sort of like EQ pedal after the microphone. <laughs> and then, you know. Not a good solution, yeah. you know? Or just a difficult solution. Yeah, but this, yeah. This makes things a lot easier. You know, a lot, a lot easier. Mids masterclass. Mids, mids That's masterclass. Really cool. Mids matter. And, um, <laughs> They they do like uh, they're they're so important in the sure in the they are the guitar they are the guitar yeah that's our our voice you yeah. know what we have to bring to a mix yeah yeah completely hey I hope this has been helpful um, in the future we should just do a video where it's just straight up where should you boost your mids here's a five hundred boost here's seven fifty yeah. here's a thousand here's this and you can hear the frequencies just go to through kind that of would learn be it. yeah yeah kind of like we did here I thought that was the that's that great. Awesome. Yeah, let's do it. I'm an HW. Suze. Thanks so much for watching Tone Drinking TV. If you get anything out of these videos, like, subscribe. You can download this um, this mids EQ. I don't know what I'm gonna call it yet, but it's on the video. It's, it's right next to the video with this. Um, we'll call this like the, I don't know, something. We'll make it up. Um, but it's up there right now, and um, you can download it. The Kemper Tips and Tricks page of the ToneJunkieStore.com website. Hey, click over. There's probably like a cool deal going on. Maybe there's a pack for five bucks. Maybe there's a $10 pack. Maybe there's something you haven't had. Maybe you want to check out the Everything Pack. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. And uh, there you go. I'm an HW. Suze. HW, the Suze. Out. Out.